Okay, so it's time to start talking about gas exchange. All right, so here we're going to talk about external and internal respiration. Um, and yeah, that's really what it is, but we're going to break this up into two parts. Now, as you're aware, my favorite thing to talk about apparently is, is flow down gradients. And these gradients are really important. Now, to keep things sim simple in PE 220, um, we're going to assume that alveolar oxygen and arterial oxygen, or the pressures in each, are the same. We're also going to assume that alveolar CO2 and alveolar carbon dioxide is the same. Okay, The difference, which is important, comes between the arteries and the veins, or the alveoli and the veins. <clears throat> we have this difference. This allows for a gradient, right? And so the difference between the, it's actually the alveoli and the veins, right? So what happens is a red blood cell will come in here. It's got a partial pressure of 40 of oxygen and it comes in and somewhere in here, we're just going to say from here to here is the capillary where diffusion takes place. And so this, these red blood cells as they enter have low oxygen, but by the time they leave, they're perfectly equilibrated. Okay. Which means oxygen's completely, we get, we eliminate the gradient. Um, and so now we have the same pressure of oxygen in our arteries that we do with our, with our alveoli. Mm -hmm. The same is true, or at least we're going to talk about it, as if the same was true with carbon dioxide. Um, there are slight differences between alveoli, alveoli and arterial oxygen um, that I do want to at least mention, but you'll learn about that in different classes uh, where it's really important. So like x -phys, we'll talk about it. So the question then is, why does oxygen leave the alveoli um, while carbon dioxide enters the alveoli? And the answer is flow down gradients. We've got a gradient. So more oxygen in the alveoli than the venous blood that enters the pulmonary capillary. However, there's more CO2 in the venous blood that enters the pulmonary capillary than there is in the alveoli. So with diffusion, this is really important, and there are several factors that can affect the rate of diffusion. So when you hear rate of diffusion, just think of it in terms of like the speed with which diffusion occurs. And there are four things that affect the rate of diffusion. So the pressure gradient... Okay, which you're well aware of. The surface area, so basically how many places are there for this to occur. Thickness, or you could think of in terms of distance. And then there's a diffusion constant that's different for every, every gas. So here's a formula. You'll never use this formula, but it does answer a question that I might ask you. Which of these factors will increase the rate of diffusion which of these factors will decrease the rate of diffusion? Sorry about that. I just knocked into my, my microphone. And so if you look here, surface area, diffusion constant, and pressure gradient, as any of those numbers go up, the rate of diffusion goes up. However, if we have a greater thickness or a greater distance, the rate of diffusion goes down. Okay, this is why diffusion doesn't occur in your main airways, like your bronchioles and your trachea. It's just, it's too thick. There's too much of a distance. Okay, when we're going from an alveoli to a capillary, here, we have to tr cross a couple of membranes, but they're essentially one cell thick. And while that takes time, it doesn't take that much time. So, <clears throat> I've got several, I've got four examples here where we're going to alter one of these, um, one of these uh, characteristics or variables, and we're gonna, I want you to figure out, well, how will that affect the rate of diffusion? I will let you know, we're not gonna ever deal with the diffusion constant. A fun fact or an interesting thing is that carbon dioxide actually dissolves in plasma much easier than oxygen does. Okay, so it actually has a higher diffusion constant. So let's go through these um, one at a time. So the first one is, oh, what happened to my screen? All right, sorry about that. So the first one is <clears throat> emphysema. All right, so that destroys alveoli. So there's two questions you need to ask yourself. What's that going to do to alveolar um, oxygen and what's it going to do to arterial oxygen? All right, so emphysema destroys alveoli, but it doesn't actually do anything to the amount of oxygen that gets into the lungs. I can still breathe in, I can still breathe out. Okay, but so I'm going to have normal alveolar oxygen, 
But what happens is by destroying or by having emphysema, we're destroying that alveoli. We're decreasing our surface area, which means we have decreased alveolar oxygen. Okay, so people that have emphysema are going to have low oxygen. Next, we've got um, to the top right, we've got edema. And so edema is where fluid accumulates in the interstitium. Okay, and hopefully you get an idea of what's going on here. So just because I've got fluid um, in between my capillary and my alveoli, is that going to change alveolar oxygen? The answer is no, it's going to be normal. But what happens to diffusion? Well, it's going to be um, decreased because I have a greater distance or there's a greater distance for oxygen to travel because we've increased the thickness or we've increased the distance. Next, we've got fibrosis. So we're making, basically what happens is, is there's connective tissue that's in the interstitium. Okay, it's making the alveoli thicker. This doesn't change alveolar oxygen, but it reduces arterial oxygen because we've increased this thickness. Okay, again, same type of thing. We've increased the distance that has to travel. The last one is asthma. So when we have asthma, we reduce the size of the airways. Okay, so this lowers alveolar ventilation. So alveolar oxygen decreases. And as a result, we also have a decrease in arterial oxygen because we've got a lower pressure gradient. Okay, and it would stand to reason that if I've got low alveolar oxygen, I'm going to always decrease my arterial oxygen because my arterial oxygen will never exceed my alveolar oxygen. All right, so just a couple more things here. There are three things that affect alveolar gases. Okay, so first is what's the pressure of oxygen and CO2 in the inspired air? And really, this doesn't matter because this is always zero. Okay, the only reason or the only way that partial pressure of CO2 isn't zero will be if you're breathing through, breathing a mask that has, you know, that's giving you CO2 or you walk into a room that's full of CO2 or like something like that. So, um, but in natural conditions, you can't change or you won't change the partial pressure of CO2. Next is the alveolar ventilation. So how much air are you getting in and out of your alveoli? And then you've got to take into account, well, how much oxygen are you using and how much CO2 are you producing? So we're going to go through these. We've got two different situations and that's what we're going to end with. So the first one is, let's just say I, you go up to altitude. And so the way that I want you to think about this is let's just say you're in your chair watching this video and then we do the Star Trek Beam Me Up, Scotty, where you go from your chair in your bedroom. Now you're in a chair on top of a mountain. So you get beamed up to the top of Pike's Peak um, where they have a nice little restaurant. It's at 14,000 feet. They have some pretty good donuts that you can eat there. All right. But you're still just sitting there. So what's going to happen to each of these factors? Okay. Because we're at altitude... Oxygen will be less, but there's going to be no change in CO2. Remember, CO2 is always zero unless you're other, unless we tell you otherwise. Okay, so I'm going to circle that just to be clear. Rate of alveolar ventilation. Now, when you're just sitting there, nothing's going to change, at least initially. Okay, so that's going to remain constant. So what's going to happen to your oxygen consumption and CO2 production? Now, you might not be aware of this, but no matter where you're at, what you're doing, the oxygen requirement is the same. So if I'm sitting here or I'm sitting on top of Mount Everest, the amount of oxygen that I need or that I'm using remains the same. Now I can change that by exercising or doing something else, but if the activity is the same, I'm using the same amount of oxygen. Also means I'm producing the same amount of CO2. So as a result, both of these would remain constant. So what's the net result? Okay, and so I'm gonna try and draw here. So we're gonna have oxygen and CO2, okay, oxygen. So this one goes down, this one stays constant. Constant, if I'm not breathing more, I'm not bringing more oxygen, I'm not getting rid of more CO2, okay? And then the same is true with my production and consumption, okay? So what's the net result? The net result is that my alveolar oxygen will go down my, my alveolar CO2 will remain constant. Whoops, the line perfectly there. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just erase this line so it doesn't confuse people. All right, and so 
if I just go to altitude over time, over and it won't take very long, and it depends, especially if you're up at 14,000 feet, what's going to initially happen is your, your oxygen is going to drop, but your CO2 will remain the same. Okay. <clears throat> Next, let's change it. So we're still here in Terre Haute this time, but now we're going to go from resting to exercise. So how, does the fa how, does, how would exercise affect each of these three factors? Okay, just by exercising, you don't change the CO2 or the O2 of inspired air. So I'm just going to give an X. It's easier to write an X. Okay, so here's my O2 again. Here's my CO2. Okay, my rate of alveolar ventilation. Well, both are going to, so that's going to increase, which will increase my oxygen and it will decrease my CO2. Okay, <clears throat> so what's going to happen to my rate of oxygen consumption? Well, that's going to increase, okay, and be, and then my CO two will dec uh, will also increase, okay. <clears throat> now, what's the net result? The net result is that they cancel each other out, and so this is going to confuse some people for just a second. So I'm going to try and explain this. I breathe more during exercise to bring more oxygen in. The reason I need more oxygen is because I'm consuming more oxygen. Okay, so if I'm just focusing on the oxygen. Now, if I focus on the CO2, the breathing, the increased breathing would decrease my CO2. Okay, if, if all other things are staying equal. But one of the reasons I'm breathing more is because I'm producing more CO2. And so to get rid of CO2, I breathe more. Okay, and so when you're exercising, you're breathing just enough to maintain your oxygen and maintain your CO2. If you've got questions about this or if this doesn't make uh, sense, please bring this up when we talk about this in class. But if not, that's where we're going to end.